Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Happy Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Happy Friday. Thank God it is Friday. So I want to talk to you really, really quick this morning from the topic of an abuse of grace, an abuse of grace. What am I talking about today? Let's jump in. So what is grace? Uh, well, it's my name, right? Uh, but other than that, what does, what is grace? What does it mean? It means unmerited favor. So unmerited means you don't deserve it. You have not earned it yet you receive it anyway. So the definition of grace is unmerited favor. I remember my mom when I was younger, she used to explain to me the meaning of grace, but I did not understand it until I got a little bit older, a little bit more mature, a little bit more knowledge. Then I began to understand the meaning of unmerited favor. It's favor that you don't deserve, but you get it anyway. So you'll see grace all throughout the Bible, right? But let's talk about what we know about grace. And there's so many different scriptures um, in the Bible. Uh, about grace, um, but I'm just going to give you a few to point out uh, a few things about what we know that grace is, right? So what do we know about God's grace? It is something that we can't earn or deserve, right? It is actually a gift. Ephesians, the second chapter, the eighth through the 10th verses, uh, reading from the NIV, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we understand by that scripture that we can't earn grace, and there's nothing that we can really do to deserve grace. Instead, it is a gift, right? What else do we know about grace? Uh, God continues to give us more grace, even when we don't deserve it. James 4, uh, 4 through 6, NIV. Uh, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Friendship with the world's me world means enmity against God. What does that mean? That when you make friends with the world, you are making yourself an enemy of God. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. There it is. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture said God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble that is why scripture said god opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble so we know that what we cannot earn or deserve grace it is actually a gift god continues to give us more grace even when we don't deserve it what else do we know some are gifted more than others so some people get more grace right than other people and we often hear a scripture. So when I first read this, I, what came to my mind was when the scripture says God is not a respecter of person. Uh, but let's look at what the scripture says here. Let's go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to give you the seventh verse and then the 11th through the 12th and I be. But to each one of us, grace has been gifted as Christ apportioned it. So what does that mean? As Christ apportioned it, that means that different people get different portions. It, it, it puts me in the mind of the story, uh, the parable about the, the three the three men with the talents, right? And, and I think some translations calls it bags of, of money, I believe it was. But the bottom line is, in that parable, what it was, was God was giving to each one according to his ability. So we understand that some are gifted more than others, but to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So there's more grace or a certain level of grace that is different given to certain people based upon what they need to get done in the body of Christ, right? Or what their job is in the body of Christ. What else do we know about grace? We are supposed to be good stewards over grace. And a lot of time, this is what trips up uh, baby believers, infant believers, or even non-believers because they are often given this impression of God that he is just, you know, full of grace. And he is. But 
the flip side of that coin is you also going to reap what you sow and there's also going to be consequences to your actions and your choices. And so people like to hold on to this image of God as being this God that is full of grace that will just continue to give you so much grace that you don't even reap what you sow that will continue to give you so much grace that you can partner with sin and, and, and not repent, not change, make sin a lifestyle. And yet God is sitting there with all this grace that will never run out. It's not that the grace will never run out because God has a limitless supply of grace, but people often forget that God said in Galatians, I think it's Galatians 6, be ye not deceived, God is not mocked, a man will reap what they sow. And so God can be limitless with grace, right? But you still will reap what you sow. And so this is what a lot of people get tripped up on is that they look at God as this God that is full of grace, which he is. But they disregard the other side of that coin that we are supposed to be good stewards of grace. Let me give you a scripture for that. Romans, the sixth chapter, 13 through the 14 uh, verses. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness, for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. So you're under grace. That's great. God has this limitless supply of grace. But here's the flip side of that coin. We are not supposed to offer any part of ourselves to sin as an instrument of wickedness. But rather we are supposed to offer ourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. We are supposed to offer every part of ourselves to him as an instrument of righteousness so that sin shall no longer be our master. That's the flip side of this limitless, this, this God that has a limitless supply of grace, which he does. But there's something that we're supposed to, to do. We are supposed to be good stewards over this limitless supply of grace that we have access to through God, right? So what is a good steward? A good steward is someone who manages the resources they've been given by God in a responsible and faithful way. So I'm going to give you an example. I don't know if many of you can relate to this. Maybe not. You know, I don't know what stage of, uh, of your life that you're in. But let's say, let's look back. If you're around my age or, you know, you might be a little bit older. Let's look back to a time when you used to be a little bit more um, irresponsible. Let's look at bills, for example. So let's say you have internet service in your home, which most, most homes do have, all right? So let's say you have internet service in your house and the internet provider tells you that, listen, your bill, your billing period starts from the first of every month, right? And then it ends uh, on the 30, 30, let's say the 30th, the last day of every month, right? And here's the deal. You have five days after your billing period to pay your bill. Now, if you don't pay your bill after that five days, your service is going to be cut off, right? Well, if you're like me and how I used to be, okay, the first of the month, I have my internet. It goes all the way through the month. This is great. 31st, so the last day of the month comes. Okay, I know the bill is due. Policy says that if I don't pay my bill five days after the last day of the month, my internet is going to get cut off. Well, here's the deal. Policy can say one thing, but if you're like me, you will find little loopholes where the policy will say, if you don't pay it in five days, your service is going to be cut off. But then we find out that the company actually has a grace period. So it gives us 10 more days past that, that, that deadline that the policy said. And so what do we do? We take full advantage of those extra 10 days, right? So they said do it by the fifth day of the next month or else your services will be terminated. But yet we found a loophole that says we have 10 or that gives us 10 more additional days to actually pay our bill before our services get terminated, right? So every month, what do we do? We don't pay the fifth day of the beginning of the next month. We're going to wait all the way until 10 more days when we know they're getting ready to cut it off. So we look at this thing, we find a loophole, we see some grace, what they call a grace period, right? So we find out there's a grace period. It's not in the policy, but yet and still we have found that it is there. And so what do we do? We take full advantage of that every month. And then guess what happens? One month, the company says, you know what? The policy says by the fifth day of the next month, 
your services will be terminated if you do not pay the last month's bill. And so this month, we're going to teach you a lesson and we're going to cut off your services. The heck with this 10-day this grace period, additional grace period that we've been giving you, we're getting ready to cut it off day six. Uh, look, here's how they do it. 12 o'clock a.m. on day six, your services are going to be turned off. Then what do we do? We get our panties in a bunch. We call. We get nasty with the people. We tell them, listen, every month, I know what your policy says. I know what the bill says. I know what the, the rules and the stipulations say. But every month for the last six months, I have been paying in the middle of the next month. And y'all ain't cut it off yet. Why are you doing it this month? We call and we get nasty. We cuss the people out. We blame the people. We call them unethical. Uh, put a guilt trip on them. Uh, why? Because we abused grace. Here's what we did. We knew what the policy said, but we found a, loop, a loophole, took full advantage of it, and then when grace runs out and they decide this month, we ain't having grace and mercy on you because you are abusing grace. This month, we're going to cut your services off at 12 o'clock a.m. on the sixth day, just as our policy says. We get our panties in a bunch. We point the finger at them. We get ugly with them and act nasty with them as if they have never given us grace before. And one thing we fail to do, and it's human nature, we fail to hold ourselves accountable and we fail to look in the mirror and, and in the mirror and look at ourselves and see what we did wrong, right? And so in the same way, we are bad stewards of God's grace because we do things and we make decisions. And then when we make these decisions and we do things and we get the consequences, then we look and say, God, you've been allowing me to do this all this time and, and, and you let me get away with it. You've been allowing me to fornicate and lay up and do all kinds of stuff outside of marriage and now you allow me to be with child. You allow me to go rob people for the last three years and now you allow me to actually get hurt this time during this robbery attempt. You allow me to go hustle and sell dope all this time and go through all these roadblocks and you gave me grace all these other times. Why did you let your grace run out now? What kind of God is this? How can you allow this to happen to me? Well, here's the deal, folks. We have a problem as humans that we don't want to accept accountability for our actions. The danger in that is that if we don't look in the mirror and accept accountability for our actions, we continue to do the same things over and over and over again, always looking for somebody else to blame instead of picking up the mirror and looking at ourselves and saying, what did I do to contribute to this? What we do as bad stewards over God's grace we partner with sin in our lifestyle choices. And I'm not talking about one-time mistakes. I'm talking about lifestyle choices. We disregard God during decision time. And then when it's consequence time, we come to God and say, where's the grace? Well, let me tell you something. God got a limitless supply, but you're going to reap what you sow. And oftentimes you don't learn until you get the consequences of your actions. God gives us chance after chance and we abuse his grace. And then when we get turned over, we want to blame God and we want to badmouth God. We want to be angry with God. We want to look at God and say, but your word said, yeah, but his word also said, don't be a partner to sin. Yes, God has a limitless supply of grace, but guess what else? There are times that God will turn us over to our sin. And there's a scripture in Romans where it talks about the reprobate mind and how these people, for although, although they knew God, they never glorified him. They neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Then it goes down and it says, therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts. So when we look at our misfortunes, one thing that we have to understand and realize and come come have a come to Jesus meeting about with ourselves is that many, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's true. But many of the afflictions, we can't look at God and say, God, you're a harsh God. God, you're an unjust God. God, you allowed this to happen. God, your word said that you were going to give me grace and mercy. God, your word said in Psalms 91 that you weren't going to let me uh, stumble and dash my foot against the stone. Yet here I am in the pool of consequence. You're in the pool of consequence, not because God is unfaithful, not because God is a man that he should lie, not because God is unjust, but because of the seeds that you planted. Many of the afflictions that we're dealing with, 
is a harvest of the seeds that we have planted. We got to look in the mirror and hold ourselves accountable. We got to look at the decisions that we have made. We got to look at God and accept him for who he is. He is a loving God. He is a merciful God. He is full of grace, grace that we don't even deserve and cannot earn. But there are some things that we do that, that gives us the harvest that we are eating from. If you don't like the consequences and the harvest that you are eating, I encourage you to take a look back at your decisions and look at what you have done and how you have abused grace all along the way. And then when you get in the pool of consequence and it's quicksand and you are quickly sinking in the pool of consequence, then you want to look at God and say, God, why did you allow this to happen? I encourage you this weekend to take some time to look over the part that you played in your affliction, the part that you played to get yourself in the pool of consequence. What you will find if you look and give yourself a sobering look in the mirror and be completely honest with yourself, humble yourself, you will find it was your decisions that got you in the pool of consequences that you are in. God does have grace and mercy. You can repent and come to God. God will forgive you. God will work it for your good. But one thing we have to do as human beings is stop pecking God like he is this awful God because he allows us to reap the harvest of what we have sown. God ain't harsh. God ain't unjust. It's us and the decisions that we have made to cause ourselves to look up and find ourselves in the pool of consequence. Listen, don't abuse God's grace. There is a limitless supply of it, but there are things that we're supposed to do. And the biggest thing that we're supposed to do is not partner with sin as a lifestyle choice. I love you. I hope that word blessed you today. I am Grace Amber. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.